So, uh, appreciate you guys coming out and covering Penn State football. Like always, I'm going to kind of just get into right away into Wisconsin. Um, obviously, a lot of history um, you know, with this program. A uh, ton of respect for their head coach. Obviously, he's a, he's a Big Ten guy. Um, you know, for most of his career player and as a coach, uh, has done a nice job wherever he has been. Um, I think really the last three weeks they've played their best football. They're really coming on right now, just watching them on tape, how clean they're playing, how hard they're playing. It, it's impressive to watch. Um, when you talk about their offensive coordinator, Phil Longo, um, is a local guy. Um, you know, started his career just, I don't know if you guys know this, started his career at East Stroudsburg. Just want to make reference of that. Um, but Phil's done a really good job, obviously did a great job when he was at North Carolina and has been at Wisconsin now the last couple of years. Really comes from a <coughs> spread RPO tempo background, but he's evolved. And I think part of that evolution is being at Wisconsin and being uh, with Luke. Um, I think there's, a, there's an obvious commitment to running the football, just running the football maybe in a different way than we're used to seeing Wisconsin run the ball, but still very, very effective. Um, we've been impressed with their quarterback, Braden Locke, who's a Mississippi State transfer. We've been impressed with their running back number three, um, Tawee Walker, who's an Oklahoma transfer, and then their wide receiver, uh, number eight, Vinny Anthony. Uh, those, guys have been, those guys have been impressive to watch, and again, they're doing some really good things. Uh, defensively, uh, Mike Tressel uh, is the defensive coordinator, was at Michigan State for a long time. That's kind of his background. Um, kind of, you know, I, I think if you, if you look at how Michigan State played all those years and how, how Wisconsin is playing now, I think there's, there's some similarities. Obviously, they've evolved and tweaked some things as well. But uh, they're playing really good football right now on the defensive side of the ball led by Coach Tressel. Um, guys that jump out to us is number 24. Um, Hunter Wohler, the safety, uh, linebacker number seven, uh, Jaheem Thomas, who's an Arkansas transfer, uh, cornerback number two, Ricardo Hallman, who I think last year led the nation in interceptions, and then defensive end, uh, number eight, Leon Lowry, who is a Syracuse transfer. And then on special teams, Matt Mitchell, um, I think this is where they've really stood out last week. They had a huge game against Northwestern on special teams. Uh, and a lot of different ways impacting the game. But their punter, number 49, Atticus Bertrams, who's a, an Australian punter, does a really nice job for them a number of different ways. And then their kick returner, number eight, again, the wide receiver, uh, Vinny Anthony, who uh, is doing some good things for them as a returner right now. So um, the bye week was good, was able to get a ton of work done, uh, not only from a self-scout perspective, but also really uh, from a recruiting perspective, <coughs> excuse me, as well. And, um, you know, obviously this is going to be a, a big week for us. So had good practice on Sunday, a little bit different practice model. Obviously not having the previous game to watch film on or do corrections, able to get a little bit more of a head start on Wisconsin. Uh, and then we'll have practice tomorrow. So uh, open up to questions. Let's go to Rich Garcella, followed by Frank Bodani. Good afternoon, James. How are you? Good, Rich. How are you? I'm well, thanks. James, how would you assess your wide receivers midway point of the season, and how how big a factor do they have to be if teams continue to design defenses to stop the run? Yeah, I think um, first of all, I've been I've been pleased and impressed uh, with our wide receiver room. Um, with their production, with their ability to impact games, and then also different guys doing it. You know, there's, there's obviously last week, uh, Julian Fleming had a huge game for us, or two weeks ago, excuse me. Um, there's been games where Omari's been the guy. There's been games where obviously um, uh, Liam Clifford has been the guy. There's been games when obviously Trey's been the guy. So I think that's helpful too that a number of different guys have been impactful and, and making plays for us, um, which I think 
<clears throat> puts it puts some challenges on the defense so that there's not just one guy. But I think overall it's been good. I think we need more of that. We need to continue to develop it. We need to continue to grow it. We need to make sure we're cre continuing to create opportunities and take advantage of their strengths. Um, I think that's going to be really important. I mean, obviously, not only the running backs, but I think we all know 44 is going to get a ton of attention moving forward as well. So I think your point is a fair one. Um, um, there should be more opportunities for these guys because of that. Um, but there's also going to you know, need to be a, a continued growth and production as the year goes on. Let's go to Frank Bodani, followed by Mike Gross. Hey, good afternoon, James. Hey, Frank. Hope you're well. Hi. Uh, turning to defense, could you maybe do something similar, evaluate a little bit uh, your linebacker position? Has that, have you gotten what you need and what you expected so far from that position? How do you look at it going forward the second half of the season there, especially with some of the new guys, young guys, that I guess you would hope to be able to intersperse more? How do you look at that position? Cool. Yeah, I think a little bit different than the wide receiver position from the standpoint that I think there was a lot of confidence coming into the year with the experience that we had at linebacker. Then we had some injuries um, and, and some other things that affected our depth. So um, I think overall, I think good. Um, I think, you know, Kobe and Elsden and, and Dom, you know, we, we've missed some time with Dom, but um, you know, there's a core group of guys there that I think have played a, a ton of football for us. Obviously, Tony Rojas is as well. Um, and then I think the, the development of Dakari, I think, has been big. Um, <coughs> um, that, that is something I think he's really flourishing right in right now. And there's been a lot of conversation about it as well. Um, but doing some great things for us on special teams and is, is probably playing better at the linebacker position for a guy that's never done it before than maybe we anticipated. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think the group has been, has been good. Tamir is another guy that has had some bumps and bruises and missed some time. He's a guy that's flashed, and we need him to continue to develop for us not only on special teams but on defense. I think he has to continue to be a, a guy that, that – um, his grow continues to, uh, to evolve and grow as the season goes on. Um, but with all the moving parts that we've had there, I've been, I've been pleased with it. And obviously, you know, Kobe leads the way and, and Tony and Dom just based on experienced guys and having all three of them healthy at the same time right now is valuable. Let's go to Mike Gross, followed by Mark Wogenrich. Good afternoon, James. How are you? Good, Mike. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, Against uh, in the Illinois game, the run you were really dominant in the run game, 230 some yards. Uh, the last couple of weeks, less so. And obviously, the game situation and what the defense is doing to you is a big factor in that. But how satisfied were you with the way you guys ran the ball the last couple of weeks? What you got out of the run game? Yeah, I, I think. For us, we got to do whatever we got to do to win, and that will be different each week, and that will look different each week based on, I think, your point, Mike, what we're doing offensively and what the game plan is, but also uh, impacted by that is, is how the defense um, you know, decides to game plan and how the defense decides to play us. I mean, most teams are going to go into the game with something that they are adamant about that they're not going to give up, whether it's – hey, we're going to double team 44, or whether it's we're going to load the box to stop the run. Um, most people are going to kind of have a plan and say, we're going to stop this, and if they're going to beat us, they're going to beat us doing these things. And, and I think that really impacts a lot of this. Um, would we like more production in the running game? Yeah. Would we like more explosive plays in the running game? Yes. Has that been a discussion over the last week during the bye week? Yes. But again, if we go out there to play Wisconsin and they got nine guys in the box, then we're going to still run the ball because we're committed to doing that. But the game may go differently in terms of um, our production and throwing the ball and our production in the run game. So all those things are kind of factored in to how we're going to operate each week and what we're going to have to do to win. Let's go to Mark Wogenrich, followed by Johnny McGonigal. Hi, James. How are you doing? Good. How are you, Mark? 
Good, thanks. Um, could K.J. Winston return to play for Penn State this year? And then how has he contributed to that safety room otherwise off the field the last six weeks? Yeah, I think I have, have somewhat answered that question in terms of the long-term injury. Um, and that's that's about as far as I'm going to go with the details of that, which is which has been pretty typical long-term injury. Um, but yeah, KJ, you know, um, we we are hoping for him um, to have a more significant impact in terms of leadership, in terms of all those other things. But right now, KJ's focus is on 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 getting healthy. Uh, I, I actually visited with him and his family on Wednesday night, which was awesome. Me and Dex, uh, that was great. Um, but but he's a huge part of our program. Will continue to be a huge part of our program. Um, but obviously, based on some of the things that he was working through from a health perspective, um, his focus was on that, uh, which with which rightfully so. Our last question from Zoom, Johnny McGonigal. Hey James, how are you? Good, Johnny. How are you? Good, good. Uh, kind of a follow up, um, but sticking with the safety position, uh, Jalen Reed. Uh, so far this season, you know, team leading tackler, uh, made some big plays. You know, in the backfield, uh, breaking up some passes. How would you assess how Jalen's played through six games? Yeah, I, I think he's playing really well, and he's not just a guy that plays really well uh, himself, but he impacts others. Uh, you watch him out there running the defense, <clears throat> um, you know, communicating checks, um, just does a phenomenal job when he comes to the sideline. The information he's able to give us is, is extremely valuable, um, but playing very, very well. Typically, you don't want to be in a situation where your, your safety is leading in tackles, but as we know, he hasn't really just played a traditional safety role. He's also played the outside linebacker position as well. Um, I'd like to see us get back to doing that. Uh, so as Day Day continues um, uh, to develop and grow, um, being able to get all three of those guys on the field, you know, I think is going to be important for us moving forward. We'll go to questions in the room over here. Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Uh, I noticed uh, Kale came over to talk to the team. Could you tell me what goes into the decision to bring somebody like that over and what was his message that you can share with us? Yeah, we do it every year. He's come and spoke almost every year. Um, <clears throat> we'll have different people from the campus and from the university come and speak during training camp and then sometimes during a bye week. Obviously, Kale's done, done a phenomenal job um, and is, you know, uh, universally respected, not, not only uh, across campus and in the community, but I know on our team specifically and in our locker room. So he came this summer. And I thought his message really resonated with our guys, so we brought him back to kind of double down on it, and uh, it was good. But but typically, we have coaches, ads, administrators, the band, all these people come during the summer, and Kale Kale was one of those guys this summer, and and did a nice job, like I mentioned, and and I wanted to bring him back during the bye week and just kind of double down on it. Can you share anything he said? Yeah. Um, you know, really, his message is is really very consistent with the messages that we give our guys um, all the time. It's just a different voice delivering that, which is which is powerful. So it's not you know the same message that we're delivering from the same people. It's a similar message, um, and I think a lot of it is about being present, uh, being appreciative. Um, you know. And then the other one is is controlling the things that you can control and not inhaling or reading or listening to outside voices or words was, was really the message. Over here on the left, Mike. Hey, James. Hey, Mike. I have a question about your role as a voter in the USA Today coaches pool. What's the process for that? Does it vary as the season goes along? And... What's your strategy in voting for your own team in that pool? Yeah, um, it doesn't vary a whole lot. Um, basically, um, I think Sunday mornings, that's got to be in, I think, by 12 o'clock. Michael Hazel used to, used to put this together for us. Um, now Will Ryman does that. He puts it together for us. We typically have the AP poll last week, the coaches poll, 
and then and then how we voted last week and they're usually always pretty consistent for the most part to be honest with you um but i look at that and then i look at the you know whoever lost that week um whoever won that week you know that was in the top 25 who should come out of the top 25 who should go into the top 25 based on the previous weeks um i'm also a big proponent of uh you know the the power conferences just based on the competition that they play week in and week out and the challenges that come with that um but for the most part it's it's very very similar to to what you know you see out there publicly there's very little um differences between the ap poll the coaches poll and our poll that we put out every single week Yeah, the same way we look at that everybody else's, and um, you know, typically again, it's it's pretty consistent, right? Um, I think all all three of us had it ranked exactly the same same way this past week. Um, there's some times where we have them voted, Penn State voted lower than what other uh, maybe um, publications have us ranked, and there's there's a few times where we've been ranked a little bit higher. Um, but then obviously it all comes out in the averages. Over here on the right, John. Hey, James, how are you? Good, John, how are you? Doing good. Uh, Tom and Andy both talked about Tyler Warren during the bye week. Tom mentioned how impressed he was with him at Indiana. Andy mentioned seeing his basketball highlights and being impressed with him from the jump. Was there a point this off season where you knew that Tyler Warren would be a focal point of this off season if so, or of this uh, offense? And if so, when was it? Yeah, I mean, no, we had a we had a returning starter um, that we felt like was a really good player and and would be a focal point. Um, obviously, him and Theo split time last year, so with Theo gone, um, you know, I, I think everybody on our team and everybody on our staff felt like the guys that had returning production and and starters would be would be focal points on our offense. So. You know I, that would that would probably be the two running backs, and and that would be Tyler. And there was a lot of discussion about some of the wideouts. I think I think Trey is a guy that was kind of part of that conversation as as well. Um, but those were probably the guys, pretty pretty obvious probably to everybody. But it's not like there there was a a shift or a change. Um, that was kind of our thoughts coming into the season. Uh, and it's it's continued to be that way. But just like the running game, depending on how people play you each week, um, you know that that could that could change. In the back, Allie. Hey, how are you? Hey, Allie. You just talked about it when you talked about Kale's message, not inhaling, reading, getting too sucked into the hype for players. We've been at this point in the past couple of seasons before where you start talking about maybe complacency or kind of resetting that message here mid-season to make sure you finish the season strong. What is that message right now when it comes to, hey, we've done a lot of really good things, but you can't just kind of rest on what you've previously done. You got to keep looking forward. Yeah, we, we really don't talk about that. Um, it's just about getting better. We, we, we need to get better. We needed to get better last week. We need to get better each week. That is collectively. That's on each side of the ball. That is by position. That is by individual. That's coaches. That's players. That, that's everybody. So we really just focus on getting better every week and, and focus on um, studying our opponent and giving it the, the necessary amount of respect and then doing whatever we got to do to be to be one and zero. Oh. But the the message really doesn't change a whole lot. We're trying to be as consistent as we possibly can uh, in our approach, and um, you know that is for the most part served us well. On the right, Audrey. Good hey, afternoon. Um, I wanted to kind of go back to your the conversations you had with Andy before you hired him. What do you maybe recall about those conversations and how have they aligned with what he's been able to do throughout the first half of the season with this offense? Yeah, um you know, I think the a lot of it is probably obvious to you guys. It's it's overall philosophy um offensively. Um it is the ability to create explosive plays obviously was a was a big part of the conversation you know based on on how last year played out 
Um, it was the ability to run or pass and, and balance. Um, and then it was studying on film and, and in conversation about um, kind of plays that he had focused on and plays that we had focused on. And probably the biggest difference um, from what we've done in the past is probably a little bit more option. Um, true option, not off of uh, off of read option, but true option. Um, that was probably the one thing that was a was a little bit different in in the conversations. Um, but to be honest with you, very similar. It was also about coming in here and only changing what we had to change, because again, it it wasn't necessarily broke. It was it was that we needed to take the next step. Uh, from a production standpoint and specifically from an explosive play perspective. Um, so I think it's it's been very similar to what we talked about. Um, I think he's been comfortable because we spent a lot of time talking about how we operate and how we do things and what my expectations are and <clears throat> weekly practice schedules and spring ball and summer and all those types of things. Um, and then also, you know, um, from the other, you know, perspective, um, you know, getting an idea of how he wanted to operate and how he wanted to function. And then also, you know, talking to people, you know, like their head coach as well as people on their staff as well. Um, so I think for the most part, for for both sides, for me and for him, um, I think it's played out for the most part the way we both expected it to be. In the middle, Shane. Hey, coach. Hey, Shane. Um, in terms of your defense, you've had you've had uh, slow. I guess you call them slow starts, where you come on better in the second half defensively. How much of that is kind of a feeling out process, where you get a snapshot of how teams call over a half and adjust accordingly, or is it more the defense just needs to play better from the start? Yeah, I don't know if I would define it that way. I, I think I, I don't have the stats in front of me, but score by quarter, um, we've given up yards. In, in the first quarter, but I wouldn't say we've started slow on defense. Um, you know, maybe maybe some opening drives, um, but I, I wouldn't describe it the way the way you described it. Um, I, I don't have those stats in front of me, but um, you know, I think I think what our defense has done a good job of is game planning and have a specific idea of where we're at, what we're trying to do this week, how we're trying to cause stress on the offense, and then as quickly as we possibly can figure out are they playing in a similar fashion that we expected them to play based on our film study, or are they doing a bunch of tendency breakers. Um, I think a few weeks ago we had a we had a team I think on second and long they had been a hundred percent you know pass in those situations. So you know your whole game plan is based on that and then right away early in the game they ran the ball to, to break a tendency and I think those things are important is um, you want to study your your opponent's tendencies to understand what they are and how you're going to game plan and how you're going to call your game. But then you also need to be aware they're, they should be aware of what their tendencies are as well. So um, I think once we got a pretty good beat of what people are doing, is it consistent with what we've seen on film? Are there exceptions? Uh, being able to make those adjustments as a coaching staff and be able to make those adjustments with the players, then we played pretty good defense, um, you know, really for four quarters. Do you have that information? Yeah, so we have given up 24 points in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. We've given up 36 points in the second quarter. As we all know, our third quarters have been phenomenal at, at three points and then 24 points. So really, you know, depending on how you're defining how well you're playing on offense and defense, to me it's about points. We've given up the same amount of points in the first quarter and the fourth quarter. We've been really great in the third quarter, which has been documented a lot. Uh, and second quarters has, has probably been the quarter where you know we've given up the most points. So um, your point is a, is a fair one in terms of yards, but I, but I think we've we've played pretty good except for opening drives. We need to clean some of those things up. On the right, Tyler. Hey James, hope you're well. 
Hey, Doug. Um, Quentin Martin got in for his third game uh, at USC. That means he can get in for two out of the next six uh, and burn his red shirt. So is he moved over into that green light territory? And regardless, how have you seen him maybe pick things up or gain something since Cam went down? Yeah, so the way the way I would describe him right now, he's still a yellow, but he's a yellow where he understands and the coaches understand if we have to play him to win games, we're going to do that, and everybody's comfortable in doing that. Um, I'd prefer to manage it as much as we possibly can um, so that we still have that flexibility and that choice moving forward. But at this stage... Uh, we're still trying to preserve it to have flexibility come the end of the year. Um, you know, and, and when Nick, you know, was working through some bumps and bruises, that, that made it more challenging to do that. So um, nothing has really changed from that standpoint at this stage. Yeah, I think, I, I, again, that goes back to me saying that I think the, the kid – as well as the coaching staff is ready to play him and feel like if we need him to, to win games, um, we will. Um, and, I, and I think to answer your question specifically, he's done a good enough job that the coaches feel like this is a weekly conversation on what we want to do with him. Because I think if we did green light him, there is ways that we would take advantage of his skill set in a 21 personnel package. Um, the challenge that, that, that I respond with that is every rep that we give him is a rep that we're taking away from Nick and Katron. And that's also something we're trying to manage as well as a coaching staff. And I know Jay Wan is specifically, um, you know, early on in the season, there was conversations about ball distribution and things like that. It wasn't a whole lot of conversations about those two guys. When you, when you have a third back that you're trying to factor in, if you're going to burn his red shirt, then you got to play him. And if you're going to play him, then that takes reps away from those other two guys. And if those other two guys are healthy, I don't know if that makes a whole lot of sense at this stage. But the, the young man is doing, doing everything right at this stage. Um, and I think there's a ton of confidence in him and a ton, ton of confidence um, in, our, in our coaching staff has in him as well. And I think he has a ton of confidence in himself. I actually think Corey's, Corey's coming on as well. So I think he's a guy that we could look at um, a little bit like the defensive ends with Max and Harvey that I could see us maybe even possibly um, – having Corey as the third back here at some point as well, hopefully to preserve Quinton too. In the front, Neil. Hey, James. Hey, Neil. <clears throat> um, when you come off a, a big weekend and, uh, in college football and you're on a bye and there were so many uh, kind of interesting high-profile games, and with the playoff, does that open up a door of uh, just some potential opponents down the road uh, do you guys learn from, uh, you and the staff learn from watching some of the bits and pieces of these games, or do you have to try to suppress that? Yeah, I think there's a little bit of that, right? Um, it's, it's hard for – I wasn't in the best position to do that because I left Wednesday night and didn't get back here until 11 o'clock Saturday night on, on the road recruiting. So there wasn't a whole lot of that going on, watching other games and, and teams like that. Um, but during the bye week, are you getting ahead on your next opponent? Yes. Are you also, with the staff sizes now, able to get ahead on, on some other opponents or possible future opponents and things like that? Yeah, a little bit. But again, you, you, you better make sure that the, the right amount of attention, focus, and respect is paid to your next opponent on your schedule, the one of those mentality. But there are some work ahead things going on too.